So hello and welcome to another Valorant map analysis video. Today we are looking about how we are going to defend on Haven. One of the harder maps to defend on, uh, obviously the three sites, uh, but just in general I think uh, one of the more tricky maps to defend on. Here is the meta, I've set it up all for you there, with Jet, Sova, Astra, Killjoy, and then it was just Sky pipping Breach to the post, but either was a pretty good option on this map, and that is what you will find the meta on this map to be. And so next thing, let's look at the different choke points on this map as well. And uh, Haven is quite simple. There are basically five ways to defend. I don't know what exactly, you know, you probably consider this the choke point on short, but you could put it a bit further back, I suppose. Uh, on B as well, obviously the garage doors and then the C uh, long entranceway as well and uh, you know this will be a pretty typical setup now I have mentioned earlier on this channel a killjoy setup here for garage by putting this turret here I do think this is very effective I will just mention it now uh, that you know this turret will see both uh, garage and people coming in through C as well which you know is quite handy for one turret to be able to do but that's the only bit of uh, specific utility I will mention now because uh, I want to keep this as general as I can so we have the five different places to defend, right? That's pretty simple. It, and generally speaking, you know, most teams will look something like this, right? When we're defending Haven, particularly in ranked games, you know, this is a pretty typical setup, but I don't actually think this is necessarily the best setup. And let me explain why. So there is nothing inherently wrong with this setup necessarily, but I do think it can be improved. And I mentioned this in the attacking video on Haven as well and talked about uh, this push through garage. And what you will see a lot of pro teams do is they kind of give up garage a lot of the time. They don't tend to fight it too much. Now, this isn't all the time. And anytime I say these things, and I always must remember to say this, when I talk about these things, it's not that you should never do this, right? It's not that you should never fight garage at all. It's that you should never even bother trying. But generally speaking, it can be a good idea to sometimes just give up. And the reason is that this entrance onto C is very shallow, right? If they do a C split and come through garage, this entranceway is very shallow and normally means that really you can sit probably anywhere from like this line and back. As long as you are further back of this line as the defender, this garage split won't affect you at all uh, most of the time. For instance, if you're playing in this corner, you know, you can see the garage entrance, but anyone coming from C long, won't be able to see you, right? And so you, you'll be fine to take this fight before you have to uh, deal with anyone coming from C. The same thing is very true if you're playing back here on logs or if you're playing behind the box here, maybe where the Astra is right here. You know, if you're playing anywhere back here, the split isn't really going to affect you. You know, they're ba basically going to end up coalescing in this area and you're just going to fight them. You know, this, this double entrance way, unless you are playing, you know, in this area here, like in between those two lines, that's when it will affect you, right? That's when you can't keep an eye on both. For instance, I don't know what I've just done there, but uh, okay, I seem to have fixed it. But if you are playing in this uh, corner here, then you're in trouble, right? Because then you can't control both of these things. You can't look both ways at once. But as long as you're further back in that line, you should be fine. And so that's why a lot of pro teams, again, will try and cheat the lane of garage. And I've talked about cheating a lane before, and I do think that on a map where there's five different choke points to defend, that cheating a lane will be very, very effective for you. And so, as I mentioned, it'll either be a killjoy turret or it could be an alarm ball or any bit of sentinel, you know, utility that gives you the information that someone is in there. As long as you have that, then you should be okay. And as soon as that goes off, that's when you can, you know, start to actually defend and, and know that they're in there and you can understand, okay, we might need to actually defend this now. But for the time being, for instance, it could be a good idea. Say you have this turret here, you know, just watching out here. It could be a good idea to play somewhere like here instead and, uh, you know, if you could support this sky, if you look at this setup instead, right, we have the information whether they're in garage. And this C player, if you tell them, you know, we're going to play a bit passive on C, uh, you know, you have the information on garage. You have a very stout defense for any B push because you've got two players here already. And if they go for an A push, then your rotations are going to be quicker because, you know, you're, you're kind of half a step over as well. And so your rotations towards A are going to be quicker from both of these players here as well. And so that is going to help you with your A defense. And this is why cheating a lane can be very useful for a defensive team, because it means that if, you know, we're defending a place that isn't that much of a problem a lot of the time, then, you know, we don't really need to send too much to it. Now, you might be like, well, yeah, OK, your defense of A is a lot better. Your defense of B is better, but you're kind of sacrificing C. But this is kind of the give and take of the situation, right? And you have to sort of understand what's going on and think about exactly what's going on. For instance, if you, the uh, t opposing team loves attacking C and they've gone C on you like, you know, three different rounds, then maybe you wouldn't do this. 
right? Maybe you would do something instead where instead of, uh, you know, this Killjoy playing here, maybe the Killjoy comes and actually just supports C long. You know, you, you stick with the same garage setup or it could even be a B setup instead and you play garage and, you know, you can adapt. But cheating a lane in general is going to be very good for you. Uh, generally, B site is another good lane to cheat. That's the thing. I think that on Haven, you should definitely be cheating at least one of the five lanes, kind of depending on what the attackers are doing and, you know, where they like going. If they like going A, then do the setup that I just showed you before, uh, like this. If they like going C, then do this one where you have two players on C, one player on Garage, and then uh, leave B uh, clear as well. Because retaking B isn't that difficult. The garage push won't be that much of a problem as long as they don't get up here. But, you know, if you've got a player in there or if you have the alarm button in there, then, you know, you just have to defend this. And generally, that won't be too hard to defend. Now, when it comes to this A site as well, I mentioned this uh, for the attackers, that this space is really quite important. Because uh, if the attackers cannot get through this space, well, that means that they can't get to either of these choke points. And you will have turned five choke points essentially into, you know, if we make this the choke point instead, we've turned five into four choke points. And that is going to be very, very good. So one thing that I think, you know, people do this quite often where, you know, they'll come out here and they'll see and they'll try and check and they'll maybe get a fight or two on this A long. I actually think it can be very beneficial at times to send two people here, you know, to send two people to take this fight and see what's going on because by the time that you know if they do cross and they've come down to here by that time you will have had the time to potentially come back and you know start to defend the a short again that won't be too much of a problem for you so i do think actually sending two people towards long at the start of rounds to uh, try and defend this crucial area here in a lobby is going to be very beneficial for you as well because if they can't get past that point well then the whole a site is is clear right we've got complete control of a site don't don't worry about it right they're not coming a if they can't get past this point and so that can be a very beneficial thing as well for the defenders to do is to just stop them here and even if you know even if somehow they they manage to like full sprint it down right and manage to get on a they don't have control of a long they're in they're still in a lot of trouble right because now their space will be you know the site essentially and that's not going to be a very good time for them you're probably going to pick them off anyway and so you don't really need to even worry about it that much so taking this a long control can be very nice and uh, i think doing it with two players instead of just the one that teams normally do uh, can be very beneficial for you as well and so i do think you can get weird and funky with your defensive setups and it's not that hard to mix it up either right i've seen plenty of teams uh you know do some weird things as well where they'll push mid right they'll take three players and they'll push them mid and maybe you know they have two on a and three pushing mid and the idea is that you know even if they the other team goes c this flank is going to be so fast you know if they if they've managed to push mid and they'll say there's no one there this is going to be so fast that you know you're going to have a very good pinch and you know def uh, attackers sorry won't expect a flank to come around you know by the time they're planting the spike they aren't going to expect people to already be on the sea long and particularly if it's like three people there you know they're going to be in trouble because that's a very weird thing that's going on and they're probably going to get caught out because they probably will plant for long most teams do plant for long so you can do a lot of weird stuff on this map and i do think that it's a very hard map to defend in a traditional way again i feel like if you just defend traditionally it's not the hardest in the world. You will find some success, but I don't think it will be super successful for you. And you should probably therefore be looking to do some weird things. And so that would be my main advice is to look at what the attackers are doing. I highly doubt that attackers will go to B site more than two times in their, in their whole attacking half. I very much doubt that. I very much doubt that they will continually, you know, push into garage a lot either. Generally, teams like to go A or they like to go C and there uh, isn't much in between. it. And that you have to use to your advantage because it's not the easiest map to defend this. But if you can understand that and use that to your advantage, then you will be doing pretty well. And so read your opponent's tendencies. Do they like going C? If they like going C, adapt and put two players on C. And you can always leave the B site or garage somewhat open and lean towards C, right? Here you've got three defenders very close. And you might say, well, you know, if they like going C, maybe we can get aggressive on A as well. And, you know, go for this fast flank here across A. You know, that's something that can very much uh, be very useful to you. And uh, so, yeah. Be adaptive, be willing to, you know, leave places free. You don't need someone on B site because B site will generally be easier 
for a retake, and I'll just quickly explain why. And it's because if you look at B site, there's three entrance ways in, right? There's there's this one that the attackers will probably have if they've planted on B, and there's this one, which it's very easy to control. Think about where the attackers have to have gone to manage to get to this point where this gen and silver are. They will have had to have gone all the way through A site, which you know isn't probably going to happen by the time they're planting on B. And that's pretty much it, right? They have to go through an entire site, which isn't going to happen if these two have just rotated from that site. Uh, and then the same is true for the C. They would have had to have pushed through Garage, which again, pretty unlikely that, you know, is going to happen with no one knowing that that's the case. Or they would have had to push through the whole C site, which isn't going to happen. So generally, you're going to have good control over two of the three entrance ways into B, which makes it a pretty easy site to retake on the whole. And that's why you can probably feel free to just play a retake. And, you know, as long as this entrance way gets smoked off, like that'll just cause chaos for the attackers. Like I've seen it a million times in pro games where, you know, this gets walled, the Astra wall in particular on this is like a death sentence for planting on B because, you know, you just put this Astra wall across here and what do the attackers do? They have to run in like completely blind and hope that they can find a kill, you know, running through the Astra wall and it's just not going to happen. Uh, so yeah, things like that, retaking on B, leaving garage, cheetah lane, always on this map and you'll probably find quite a bit of success.